Good morning. It is the 27th of November. We have a full moon. Our moon is full right now in Gemini. And I have been super, super chatty even before I opened up the recording for this meeting today. If you experienced lots of mental activity while you slept last night, if you've been mulling over a whole bunch of new ideas, if you are realizing that certain things you believe in are suddenly starting to shift and change and your narrative is now coming from a completely different vantage point, you are not alone. That is a full moon in Gemini and it's a t <laughs> we're in Sagittarius season, which means that especially this week, this week is considered the 10 of wands or the 10 of fire. It's a completion week. It feels like the end of a long journey. And let me tell you, we are, we are <laughs> through some serious tests. We are through some serious, um, oh, basically everything that we believe, our boundaries, what we're creating in the world, all of it has been tested and tempered through Scorpio season. And now the initiation, the thoughts that we initiated with, the curiosities, the ideas we initiated with in Libra season went through all of this mysterious testing and tempering. And now that it's emerging, we're finding that there are still a few beliefs that need to just be burned off. Like, uh, and, and it's, for me, it feels like it's burning off pretty effortlessly in years past. I have experienced this week with a lot more angst, like, oh my gosh, I'm having an existential crisis because I don't know what I believe anymore. I don't know what's true for me anymore. I'm I, I'm questioning my own guiding compass in this moment. And even though that's happened to me every single year during this time, and it happened again, it's happening again right now. This year, I feel so supported in that transition because I always knew, I knew it was going to come. And I know every year that as I'm questioning what I believe, it's an opportunity for me to really clear off any parts of it that are ready to be shed so that we can make space for a new fiery burning passion. And so if you're in an experience where the passion and the the wet branches or the wet matches are sort of commingling in your life, light those matches on fire and burn off the rest of the story. The weekend had us feeling the gravity of our, our reality. We had a moon in Taurus over the weekend, and that would have felt in some ways, maybe in some ways, really grounded, really positive, really practical, very real, very tangible, but it also could have faced us face to face with the full responsibility of our lives and what we are focusing on moving forward. And so if you had with that Mars square Saturn, if you had some kind of moment where you realize I just have to do this for myself. I just have to take the reins of this. I just have to have to step into my responsibility. I just have to acknowledge what's true and real. And I just stand behind that. That's essentially the first igniter that's burning off some of the old stories. And when I look at the initiation, I'm just going to read the very last paragraph of it. Um, it's it, the first part talks about how seductive it is sometimes to stay in the cold, old story, the wet story, because it was charming. It was known, it was certain and that stripping them off helps us to get light and helps us to follow our area, our arrows of intention. It helps us to slip off our inhibitions Sometimes the old story is an inhibition that we carried, something that would keep us small or a story we told about ourselves, about our privacy or about our boundaries or our capabilities. And so stripping those off can make us feel less inhibited. Um, it can feel as though we're being alchemized and purified right now. And the it's, it's bringing about a, the birthright that we all have to reinvent ourselves. And there's also something speaking to how occasionally at times like this, especially if we're like shedding off beliefs, like traditionally around this time, I start questioning 
what astrology is. I start questioning, like, am I making all of this up? And am I just very charming and convincing? And so everyone just sort of believes what I have to say. And I start to worry that maybe I'm just this charismatic whatever. And I just get off on sharing shit that I'm passionate about. And like, I start to go through all this and like literally over the weekend, I watched some documentaries about cults and twin flames and like the power that charismatic leaders have. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this my shadow? And luckily for me, I also am taking it. I've, this is not my first rodeo questioning my charisma or my story or my beliefs. Um, and so fortunately I'm, I'm like, yeah, no, Christina, you've always, you always get here and you always come to the place where literally nothing means anything. Not, there's no meaning at all. Like the world just grows, it continues to grow and then it dies and then it grows again. And this is the, this is what, what we observe as nature and humans are just these crazy, amazing, magical meaning makers. And we literally make everything up. We pay attention to stuff. We decide to put labels on it. We decide what it means and we create a reality based on the meanings that we make. And I am doing that. We have a field of astrology that I love to tune into. It's like the most exciting and magical field. It's the philosophy that I feel most charmed and 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 enamored by. And so I put myself into this field and I have a relationship with this field and I speak from this field and I, you know, tune into it and talk about it and write about it. And this is all the things I like to do because they give my life a certain type of magical meaning. This is what I like. And some people, a lot of you, obviously, if you're watching this video, you kind of like this stuff too. And you're all deciding what gives your life magical meaning. And maybe astrology is a part of that, but I bet you there's all these other things that you make a meaning about so that you can have a story about your life that has some kind of cohesive flow to it. And it's, it's crazy because none of that is real. That all exists in the mind. Every single thing that we experience is a meaning that exists in the mind that we've defined for ourselves or we've accepted from someone else because they're charismatic and charming and we like their energy. So sometimes we adopt meanings that they make as well. And I'm serious, like it's so invigorating and exciting to remind myself yearly that all of this is made up every single thing because it feels like I'm given back the the keys to delighting myself over and over and over <laughs> like like i don't know it feels like emancipation and liberation to a degree to know that i'm i'm choosing all my meanings and i hope that if if this is resonating with you you take advantage of this time in sagittarius where you can also claim the meanings you're making and you can reorient your story when we write books like my friend Tara who's having a book release today on Instagram at one o'clock Monday um when we write books we're telling a story from a certain vantage point when we put those books out we're telling a story about what our story will be in relationship with the people that are going to read the books we're making all of these stories and we're facing our own inhibitions and we're facing our own challenges and excitements and being seen and visible and all of it is made up in the mind and in the emotions and it's like so beautiful to understand that and man so this is the space this is where we're at if if you feel that your stories are quite a burden. You know, the traditionally the card of the Ten of Wands is this this guy carrying these the stack of firewood on top of his shoulder, and he's been collecting these wands over this journey, and he's taking all the firewood back to the town where he can distribute it so the rest of the townspeople can create fires and be warm. It's kind of a service, and, and so he's got these stories that he's collected, almost like a guru, right? Like, ah, I've got all these life experiences, and I'm going to 
help people warm their houses with these life experiences and these stories. And it's, we're nearing the time where we could just put it down. We don't have to take on the responsibility of the guy that collects all the firewood for everybody. We could actually put this, put those down, light our own fire, decide what lights us up, share, share that with anyone who wants to join the fire or start their own fire. I mean, it, it's, I'm having a, the lightest Sagittarius season I've ever had in my life. And if you're not experiencing this, I can tell you, this is, this is not usually my experience. My experience is usually like, oh my gosh, who am I? If all of these things aren't true and I'm not bringing all this firewood to the town, like, who am I? Like, what if this firewood's not even the right firewood for everybody? Like, oh, all this angst, right? This is, this is a time where we could just don't worry about it. Let it go. Everyone's making up their own realities and experiences. We're not responsible for any of that. We can light our fire however we want. And so if it gives us freaking kicks to pay attention to astrology, then do it. If it gives us kicks to write stories, do it. Like whatever, whatever you want, whatever lights your fire, just, just do it. That's, or don't, it's your story and your choice. You can do whatever you want. Anyways, so yesterday, like I did not feel this way until today. Yesterday, I was still in a space of like, oh, this firewood is so heavy. I've got all this stuff. <laughs> and then I had all these dreams and all of a sudden I'm not carrying it anymore and it feels great. So yesterday was the words were feeling the gravity, moon and Taurus. Mercury was in a trine to the North Node. Mercury trine North Node. North Node is saying, you need to like, it's a place where we evolve, evolve through the uniqueness of who you are and let yourself understand how unique you are, how you're making the meanings. Your meanings are unique to you. That's what the North node evolutionary point is. And then Mars was still in a square to Saturn. So, and, and it's your responsibility to make your story. Mars rules the story. It, it rules the structure it rules the behaviors that we have because of the story. So it's our responsibility. And then today, the full moon, we had the full moon while we slept. And you, you might have had a lot of dreams and insights while you slept. Today, the moon is in Gemini, Mercury is in a square to Neptune. And today, the words are, there's a new intuitive story. Today's the day where we can connect to all the stories that have ever existed, all the mythology. One of, the, I'm just going to talk about it here. One of the documentaries I watched was about Twin Flames. It's on Netflix right now. And I, there was a whole story through the teens. I guess it's still going on. There was a whole like process people were going through talking about Twin Flames and False Flames and the runner and the chaser and all these stuff. And I will admit that I was initiated into the Twin Flame story in 2012, which is exactly when Neptune moved into Pisces. And all of a sudden, all of these like intuitive um, abilities kind of came online. And all of a sudden, there's, man, I'm not even going to go into it. It was beautiful and intense. And I was reflecting last night after watching this documentary and like witnessing my own journey with that story and understanding that boy you know I'm so lucky that there's humans on the planet that I get to love on like maybe maybe I don't really buy into this twin flame concept anymore but wow how cool is it that every single person is their own flame and I get to dance with everyone I get to come into contact with. I get to pet my daughter's hair. I get to witness my son's like breakthroughs. Like there are flames that I get to be alive with. That's that. T t I don't tell me about how flamey that is. Right. And so my concept of love has transitioned through this whole Neptune and Pisces time and that's what it was meant to do it was meant to connect us to some kind of perfect divine love this some harmonious union with source and with other right connection and in some ways it was supposed to transcend this life's experience transcend this body this this time period so that you could find 
the other souls that you've incarnated with your soulmates, your past life family, right? That's what Neptune in Pisces has done for all of us in the last, well, ever since 2012. And the other weird thing is that all of that openness can, can easily become delusion. It can, it can separate us from what's literally happening here. And that's always the trick with Neptune. We're always kind of warned with Neptune. Like it can show you all the ideals and it can also make you feel like you're not a human on this planet, that you're more than a human. Yes. And that somehow the human experience is limiting your soul experience or something like that. And we all have gone through this journey of maybe not all of us, but I went through the journey of like, oh, actually being a human is good. I like it. This was actually what I'm here for. I love this. And that was a, that was another Neptune in Pisces kind of transition that had to happen for me in order to like appreciate all the other people that are alive with me right now. I am like all over the place. This is okay. It's totally fine. This is so Gemini. It's totally fine. Anyways, that's the energy for today. <laughs> this is this is Mercury in a square to Neptune. This is mind in a square to intuition. And I totally give myself permission to go on a little rabbit hole loop with that with today, which is perfectly fine. And I invite all of us to do that if you want to. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday, we still have the Neptune square the moon. We, we've got a sun square black moon Lilith. That's going to be in a trine to Jupiter, blah, 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 blah. What basically I feel tomorrow is going to be opening up for us is let's just talk about our fears so that we can grow. Let's just acknowledge it. Let's just call the elephant out. Let's just talk about our fears. The sun is going to be in a square to black moon Lilith. Sun is the thing that we're consciously focused on. Black Moon Lilith is the things we're secretly suppressing and afraid of. The sun's in Sagittarius, which is what's the truth. And Black Moon Lilith is over in Virgo saying, I'm just so afraid I don't know the answers. I'm not right about this. Neptune's in the mix saying, and everything's made up anyway, so don't worry about it. And Jupiter's in Taurus saying, because you're a human and you're never going to know everything anyway, so just just accept it and grow from being okay with not knowing everything, like period. So I'm just saying tomorrow's a great day to just talk about your fears and be okay with not knowing. Then Wednesday, um, Venus is going to be crossing the South Node. Venus is in Libra, crossing the South Node. The South Node is releasing our relationship patterns, releasing the roles that we've played. Mars already did this, so we've actively kind of released those roles. Now we're going to really feel it. Like <laughs> when Mars crossed over, we were like, I'm releasing these roles. I'm not showing up like this anymore. This is my, I'm going to act as if I'm not that role anymore. When Venus does it, it's like a done deal. Venus is like, I don't even have to think about it. I'm just not that anymore. And the moon will be in cancer. So it could feel even very emotional and it could, the reality of that could really sink in. Um, black moon, the Lilith is in a trine to Jupiter on this day as well. And Mercury will cross the galactic center. So Mercury crossing the galactic center is an exciting moment because like basically we're in this huge galaxy and the earth is over here and the galaxy is spinning and the center is over here when mercury is aligned with the galactic center it's sort of like we get a little like router from the galactic center like the galactic center is like whoa 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 and mercury is like oh i'm going to just send that message to earth and i'm going to amplify it a little bit so this could be a time where we get new spiritual instructions remember what I said, we're literally making all of this up. So if you're going to get new galactic instructions, be open to galactic instructions that you really like, or you really want, or that make your life feel really magical, um, is my suggestion since you're the meaning maker of all this. The words that I have on Wednesday are, we, we show up differently now. It's simple. 
we show up differently now. There's a lot of room for reinvention there if you want to do that. And then on Thursday, the moon will be in Cancer. It's going to move into Leo, though. I actually have here that there's going to be a heart power pivot. I don't really know what that means. A heart power pivot. Um, that'll be a nice little surprise in a good way. A heart power pivot, like our hearts in power now rather than our head, maybe. I'm not really sure, but I think we'll feel it. And I think it will feel great. And now we've got a moon in Leo on Friday and Mercury will move into Capricorn. I think we're going to really want to plan for our future on that day. I literally have the words plan for our future. And I think we're going to be planning the future from our heart and from the emotional meaning maker of our heart. Then on Saturday, the words I have are the heart commits and Venus will be in a square to Pluto. That means we're committing to like ending an old cycle. Mercury will be in a sextile to Saturn. There's a lot of stuff going on, actually. Basically, it just, it feels like Saturday's a great day to sit in a hot spring and talk about a mastermind that ultimately is like the coolest thing you've ever thought of. And like, think about all the different ways it could go and like all the different people you would invite kind of like a fantasy football league or something like that like oh my gosh who would I love to like sit in a conversation with every month and talk and like rock the meetings of the world with I think that Saturday is going to be a pretty nice day to be doing that and so something like that could feel pretty good if you can give yourself that um anyways this was <laughs> I didn't even have any coffee today. I actually quit drinking coffee a month ago. And all of this is just generated by the moon is what I'm saying. That's the meaning I'm making of all this. <laughs> like, all right. I'm going to stop the recording now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my last little things, Instagram at one o'clock Monday, if you're watching this immediately, uh, Tara Davis becoming Tara book launch and I'll be live. And so you can access it through my um, profile. The other thing is the planner. I actually went through and I made these really, really cool. So my friend Sue Ann does these beautiful Oracle collages, these soul collages. Oh, fun. Katrina's got her planner. Yeah. Um, so I went through and I created these little collages for each month of, of next year. And I'm going to use them as like thumbprints and I'm going to talk about them. So this is kind of a cool little development that happened. And I'm going to be doing a like year ahead for the collective conversation, probably the first week of January. So be on the lookout if you have not scheduled your year ahead reading with me one on one, or you're just not going to do that this year. Totally fine. Um, if you tune into these videos and you learned your chart or you got, you kind of have a rough estimate of like what, what's happening for you in the certain houses, you could probably tune into my year ahead for the collective and grok it out for yourself. It's not going to be as personalized and detailed as my personal year ahead, but I'm going to offer that in the first week of January. And I'm going to be using these little cards and I'm going to create a PowerPoint presentation. So, um, yeah. And I, I'm going to do this cool thing. I, I might like, I don't know, I might charge like a small amount of money for this workshop, but if you have a planner, you can come for free. That's what I'm going to do. If you have a planner, you just show me your planner and you get a free, you get a free pass to my in year ahead intensive, whatever thing. Yeah. Everyone, you can't see this because you're just watching me because I'm on speaker mode, but everyone in my group is showing their planners and it's super exciting. Okay. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.